A big emphasis in Calculus 3 is studying things that occur in three-dimensional space. We'll see this throughout the whole entire course. And the same thing is true for these vectors that we've been studying. Now, as we've explained just the basics about vectors over the last few videos, we've primarily focused on just two-dimensional vectors. You notice I've only so far talked about just an I component and a J component for the X-axis and the Y-axis. But in actuality, these vectors can be extended into three dimensions as well. And in fact, later in the course, we'll be doing a lot. Actually, I would say primarily we would be dealing with vectors in three dimensions, not in two dimensions. So uh, let's talk for a minute about vectors in three dimensional space. So the big change is instead of having two axes, the X and Y axis, we're going to have three axes. Notice I have three lines here. One, two, three. And these three axes will be the X axis, the Y axis, and a new what we call Z axis. Now I've, I've put a list of keywords here just to, to go through and just briefly talk about. These are some things that you'll uh, no doubt hear as you um, talk about vectors and whatnot. Um, I put these in no particular order. Uh, let me actually start with the left versus right hand system. For when most people draw a two-dimensional um, XY plane, you never really have to write the X and the Y because everybody knows this is the X axis and this is the Y axis. It's assumed everybody knows it, so we don't normally even write the X and the Y, uh, unless you're just learning about the X and the Y axis. Um, but now that we're in this new three-dimensional system, I have no idea. Is this the X? Is this the Y and that the Z? Or is this the Z, this the Y and that the X? I mean, we need to clearly define which axis is who. Now, I, this is uh, what we call convention. There's, there's nothing necessarily right or wrong about this. It's just what most people have just kind of decided on throughout the years. Um, a lot of people will call this the X axis. They'll call this the y-axis, and they'll call this the z-axis. This is the way I do it, and in all the upcoming videos, it'll be done this way. Um, this is called a right-hand system. Now, let me explain why this is called a right-hand system. It's going to be kind of hard to draw with just with my little pen here, but imagine a, a real live person all right, hopping into that picture there. Um, all right, so, so we're seeing that three-dimensional coordinate system there. Imagine that they turn around and they face you, so you're looking at them, so their back is to the origin, and then they back up uh, to where their back or their rear end is at the origin. Their right hand, this is why this is called a right-hand system, if they're looking at you, their right hand would be on this axis here. So I, this is going to be a really poor drawing, but their right hand would be along the x-axis, their left hand would be along the y-axis. So being that their right hand is along the x-axis, we call that a right hand system. Now, you could relabel these, you could do these in another order. Um, you could make this a left hand system where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, and then it would be a left hand system. Some textbooks will do it this way, but we have to pick a way and the way I'm more uh, used to doing this is with a right-hand system. So anytime I draw a three-dimensional coordinate system, I'm prob I may not write X, Y, and Z, but just know this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. All right, now what's positive and negative? The positive X values are here, the negatives are back here. Positive Y values are here coming towards you, the negative Y values are away from you. The positive Z values are up, the negative Z values are down. So just remember that as well. You might even want to sketch it out a couple of times. Okay, so this is going to be our coordinate system. I'll leave the X, Y, Z there. All right, next let's talk about octants. You're probably familiar with quadrants. Um, when you have a two-dimensional plane, you do your X, Y axis, and you have one, two, three, four big regions. Well, if you can think spatially about this, now you have eight. You have four above the XY plane. And by the way, this when I say XY plane, what I'm referring to here is um, this uh, X axis and Y axis that are flat, um, that are horizontal, 
that's going to create a flat, almost like a floor, so to speak. So you hear me say XY plane pretty frequently. So you have four octants above the XY plane and you have four below. So these are called octants instead of quatrants. All right, um, let's talk about this word, what, pairwise. What, what, is, what does that mean? When you're, when you're trying to draw a vector in three-dimensional space, uh, it'll look something like this. Let's say your vector V, um, instead of just having two components, we'll, you know, we'll say two comma five comma seven or something like that, you'll have three components. This is uh, the um, component that goes out the x-axis, this one goes out the y, and this one corresponds to the, to the z value for the terminal point. So this is a vector that would start at the origin and end at the terminal point 257, wherever that may be. Now, how do you draw that? How do you draw on a two-dimensional sheet of paper with a pencil a three-dimensional uh, object like a, a three-dimensional vector here? There's, here's where this word pairwise comes in. This takes a little practice, so don't, don't you know, fret if you don't totally get this the first time you hear me say this. But the way you do this is you graph just the first pair, pairwise, of um, points 2 comma 5 in the xy plane. Okay, so you'll find positive 2 on the x-axis. You'll find positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the y-axis. And notice when you draw your tick marks, you know, that you have on your axes, notice you do them slanted so you can kind of get some depth perception here. So this is two on the x-axis, here's five on the y-axis. Um, if you follow this up like you would normally do when plotting points in just a regular two-dimensional plane and, and see where they meet each other, so we'll draw a dotted line parallel to the y-axis from two, and a line parallel to the x-axis from y equals 5, this will give us a location on the ground. Now the word ground is not very mathematical, but you, you, get, what I'm, you get what I'm after here. This is the x-y location for the point 257. 257 is the terminal point for this vector here. This is done pairwise, two at a time. Now that we have this location on the ground, then we're going to rise up vertically seven units. So we'll see about how long seven units is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my paper is about, it's about that far. And so from this point, I'm going to rise up in the air. So it's going to be seven units above the ground. So it'll be whereabouts right here. Now notice that's not exactly in line with seven because notice and st I'm not rising up seven units from the origin, I'm rising up seven units from here. So this would be, let me get that line away, um, this would be seven units up from wherever I am in the xy plane. So this would be the terminal point, this is actually a point two five seven, but we can draw it as a vector if we draw a line from the origin up to that point right here okay and draw our little arrows and that's vector v so the short story is we don't try to tackle all three at once and i'm not saying that just because this is new to you even i don't tackle all three at once you do it pairwise two at a time you do it in pairs do the i and j component then tackle the k component that's how you can draw vectors in three-dimensional space. All right, now this is component form. Let's talk for just a minute about standard unit vectors. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute. So we had a vector i and we had a vector j. Well, now there's going to be a new guy called the vector k. Now, even the i and j are going to change slightly. In, instead of just having two components, there's going to be three since we're in space. The, I comp the standard unit vector i used to be um, zero, oh, I'm sorry, one zero. Now it's going to be one zero zero. The vector j used to be zero one. Now it'll be zero one zero. And these you can draw uh, here. It's going to be kind of hard to see because I've already kind of drawn a lot already. This is the vector i along the x-axis one unit, one zero zero. 
Uh, then you have 0, 1, 0 that goes out the y-axis like this. And then now there's going to be a new guy, a k uh, standard unit vector, that's going to be 0, 0, 1, that doesn't go out the x-axis, doesn't go out the y-axis, it just goes up the z-axis one unit. So you have your i, you have your j, and you have your standard unit vector k. So those are some of the keywords that you'll hear when we talk about vectors in space. All right, let's, um, let's talk about just a couple other brief things um, and then we'll, we'll move on to the next video. All right, so uh, vector v, I've, I've already kind of discussed this a little bit. A vector v, you can write that as v1 comma v2 comma v3 or you can write it as V1i plus V2j plus V3k if you, if you want to use the standard unit vectors. Uh, if you want to take a norm or a magnitude of this guy, you do it the same way. It'll be the big square root of not just V1 squared plus V2 squared, but now you also have a V3 squared. It's a very natural extension from, from the two-dimensional vectors. And I'm not even going to write down an example of this, but if you want to add or subtract two vectors or do scalar multiplication, it's the exact same, it's done the exact same way as you would do it with two dimensional vectors. You would just add the i components, the j components, and the k components to get your new answer. If you have a scalar multiple, you just distribute the scalar to the first component, second component, and third component, and that's it. So it's a, a very natural extension, um, extending it uh, vectors from two dimensions out to three dimensions. Now we'll have a lot more to say about this over the next few videos. We'll do some examples and whatnot, but uh, hopefully this video just introduces you to the idea of a three-dimensional vector.